Hi, my name is Frankie. Thank you for listening to To My Mom. I never listen. Well, this is always special to have people on our podcast, but nothing more like combining family that you call friends, friends that you call family. Kind of goes the same way for me and Eileen Hauser. We hate to date each other with how long we've been friends or how far it goes back, Eileen, but we've been friends a long time since our days at Kentucky. No doubt. Um, probably one of the best things that ever came out of my four years at UK was, uh, was the people, including you, Deb. Yeah, we had some good times. We're not going to go down memory lane on our UK days because we don't want to get in trouble at the beginning of the podcast. We'll save that for the <laughs> end. Um, but uh, Eileen, you have done so many different things in your career. You've been an administrator. You have been a longtime stakeholder and trailblazer in our game. You worked for Nike for a long time. You've been a sales and promotions. And you're, you're a big external thinker. That's the way I see you. So tell us what you're doing right now in your new role with AU and what AU is. Just kind of give us a treetop view of what's going on. Sure. Um, well, first of all, Deb, thanks so much for this opportunity to, to join your podcast um, and share a little bit more about Athletes Unlimited. Um, you know, fortunately, uh, last April, um, I was introduced to Athletes Unlimited. Um, didn't know much about the company or what they were doing. And within about a 12 hour period, I learned everything I could possibly know and became incredibly impressed with the model of, of pro sports that Athletes Unlimited is. Um, I am right now Senior Supervisor of Operations. I've been helping uh, Krista Miles, who's a director of sport for basketball, um, pretty much in every aspect of launching our Women's Basketball League for Athletes Unlimited. Um, just to give a little background on Athletes Unlimited, um, it was founded by founded and created by John Patrickoff and Jonathan Soros, two gentlemen that have an incredible vision for a different model of pro sports. Um, Athletes Unlimited is not only basketball, uh, we also have leagues in softball, which we're actually getting ready to start for the third year, third season of softball. Um, we have volleyball, which is getting ready to start um, next month for the second season. We launched lacrosse last summer, and then we brought basketball to the, uh, to the group, um, obviously, this January. Uh, it's been an incredible experience being a part of something that is new, um, that you can be creative with. And I, I couldn't be more grateful for this opportunity. Eileen, um, it's, is it pro sports? It seems to me that the roster is full of athletes that have played, uh, exhausted their college eligibility, and they have either been international players or professional players in the WNBA or some league. How is it different than what the WNBA is doing? Well, <clears throat> first of all, you know, I'm going to talk specifically around basketball because that's what that's what you do, Deb. Um, so Athletes Unlimited is different in a number of ways, right? Like, first of all, we're player led. And what that means is we have a player executive committee, which is comprised of five athletes that are participating in the league. Those five athletes in basketball are Sydney Colson, Natasha Cloud. Ty Young, Tiana Hawkins, and Jantel Lavender. And through this model and with our player-led model, um, they have a ton of decision-making power. And, and that includes everything from choosing the players that are playing in this league to what times our games might be, what color uniforms are, you know, like so many different parts of this, you know, as well as discipline. So, so it really, um, having a player executive committee and a player led league makes these athletes a lot more vested in everything that's going on. Um, you know, sometimes there's challenges, but for the most part, it's a, it's really been an incredible experience to see how this thing has played out in terms of the players that are playing in athletes unlimited basketball to your point. Yes, they are all athletes that have exhausted 
their college eligibility. Um, the majority of them have not played in the WNBA. We only have a small percentage that are current WNBA players. You know, what's really cool is to this point, we've had three athletes sign um, training camp contracts. First one was Taja Cole, who really, I think people lost track of, is an incredible woman, super excited about her and her potential in the WNBA. Kalani Brown um, just signed yesterday or two days ago with the Las Vegas Aces. And then it was announced yesterday that Mimi Jackson got a, got a training camp contract with the Washington Mystics. And honestly, this is part of what we're about for basketball, you know, uh, showcasing athletes that might not might have been forgotten along the way that can still play the game. You know, I'm always talking about the product, you know, and the product is the narrative. The product has to be good. Talk about the product with it being player led and, and how you go about putting the teams together and organizing competition in your venue. And then we're going to talk about your venue. Okay. Well, first of all, you know, we are player led and we are different model of pro sports, right? And one of the thing, another thing that makes us different beyond just being player led is our scoring system and our leaderboard. So, and our weekly drafts, right? So the way it works, which is very, very different and keeps the audience and consumers engaged is that we have a scoring algorithm, right? And so not athletes, we have a leaderboard. Let's start there. We have a leaderboard and athletes accumulate points based on this algorithm that was that was created with our player executive committee along with some mathematicians that basically assigned a point total to let's say for a two pointer athletes actually get 20 points for a three pointer they get 30 points for an assist or steal they get 10 now if they turn the ball over they get a negative 10 if they get an offensive foul it's actually a negative 16 so our scoring system is, is uh, translated into this leaderboard. But the biggest thing that makes our games extremely competitive, and, and we play by you know the motto, every moment counts, is the fact that we allocate points for quarter wins, quarter wins and game wins. So for example, um, if, a team might be down by 20 points, right? They lost the first quarter. They're down by 20. Well, they can win the second quarter and get 50 points. So every player on that team will get 50 win points. So even though there might be a blowout at the end of the game, players are playing extremely hard to get those quarter win points. Um, so it, it, truly, it truly exemplifies every moment counts. I love the incentive to um, stay in the game, if you will, right? Because that way you're always in it. Uh, what is yep. the reward? What's the reward if, you, if you're at the top of the leaderboard? So good question. So a couple things. First of all, um, we have weekly drafts, right? So we have this leaderboard. At the end of every week, we have four, the top four players become captains for the following week. And this is another reason why we're very different, right? As we said, we're player led. So the captains co can decide whether they wanna coach the teams, they do the subs, they do the strategy, they put in the offense, they work with what we call facilitators. And our facilitators are, you know, sometimes they're coaches, sometimes they're mentors, They've been playing a number of different roles this season and have been extremely impactful in helping our captains navigate this new coaching aspect of the game that they've been put into. So, so going back to the leaderboard, Deb, the captains are chosen each week based on their numbers on the leaderboard, right? And then also, in addition to that, at the end of the season, the leaderboard will determine one of the three parts of how they're compensated. So wherever you fall on that leaderboard at the end of the year, you'll get compensated based on your place on the leaderboard. In addition to that, with the leaderboard, I'm gonna bring in our causes, causes cause it seems like a good time, right? So another aspect that we're different is we partner with a, with a nonprofit called Give Lively. And so based on what an athlete will be compensated on that leaderboard, 
Give Lively will donate 50% of whatever the athlete will make off the leaderboard for their bonus to a nonprofit of their choice. So every athlete plays for a nonprofit of their choice the entire season and 50% of whatever they make, you know, their bonus, they'll still get their entire bonus. So don't get me wrong. Athletes will get their entire bonus, but Give Lively matches the 50% that goes to a nonprofit. So that seems absolutely phenomenal, Eileen, because you've got a equity in the league as a player. Then you've got this empowering service component that it all sounds like it's, it's a, a group of highly motivated women that compete every night because there's so much at stake. It's not like this game doesn't matter or this one's an easy one. We can circle a W over here. What have you seen from a competitive standpoint uh, as you've watched every game? Well, the game, the games have been extremely competitive, right? Um, I think because everybody's paying attention to all these numbers on the leaderboard and what they're doing. But at the end of the day, the team wins is, is what's going to get you the most points, right? As I mentioned, team win points is, uh, is 64 is weighted at 64%. So it's actually weighted higher than individual stat points. So that just really adds to the competitive competitiveness of it. But the other aspect that besides being competitive, the players are truly having fun playing, right? Some of them have referred to this as like going back to their AU days or their travel team ball days where they're just playing basketball and they're having a blast, but they're all extremely competitive because that's the nature of most athletes anyways. Mm -hmm. um, but they're having fun playing here. And I think because it's, they have a little more freedom, right? Like, they, they can run the offenses that they want to run. They can, um, you know, and, and it kind of plays to your, to your passion around, um, around scoring, right? If you look at our, our scoring, you know, offense is really more the key than defense, but that's what people like to see, you know? And, Amen. and I think, Amen. You know, so <laughs> I think it also really pay, plays till, you yeah. know, shoot to your arm falls off. Mm -hmm. And and that's what's given a player like Mimi Jackson an opportunity to be seen. Um, and it's been it's been amazing and beautiful and exciting to be a part of it. So everywhere I've been, I ask people about it and the reception is always the same thing. It's it's pretty cool that we get to hear their voices in a different way. The social media aspect of it has been a huge part of it. So people getting a chance to tell their story. Uh, Marjorie Butler, I was looking at her story, who is in med school, who's playing and playing for a higher purpose with a loss of her fiance. I was uh, absolutely um, drawn to that kind of story. Uh, yeah. What other things, Eileen, are you, because you know all these people. I mean, you and I have been around the game forever. I can't imagine there's a player that's playing that you don't know personally or know their character from some other connection that you've had through the game. What have you really enjoyed the most about being around the players during this time? What's fulfilling for you in this role? Well, what's been fulfilling for me in this role truly has been how athletes like Marjorie Butler has inspired me, right? Taj Cole's inspired me. You know, her story has been told. Um, Tasha Cloud, as she's trying to continue to to you know be a leader in in you know a lot of her like civic civic beliefs and and trying to fight for equality on a number of different levels. She has been incredibly inspiring. They just all continue to inspire me. Um, and, you know, to see their passion and them having so much fun playing the game um, has truly inspired me. But, I'll, but yeah, before we go on, I, I want to go back to what you said about our storytelling, right? And, one of the major focuses and priorities for Athletes Unlimited is, is content creation, right? We are a content creation company. That's what we do. We create content. We take a lot of pride and put a lot of resources behind storytelling. Um, you know, we're not so worried about getting 5,000 or 10,000 people in the stands. We're more about creating an incredible content 
And you can see that through the storytelling because the other thing is we're storytelling on every athlete. We're not just storytelling on our top athletes. We're storytelling on one through 44. Um, and the stories have been amazing. And we take a lot of pride in that way. And, and it shows, I mean, we have 15 full-time people that are part of that content creation team. And it's been cool to see that. Well, you mentioned one of my passions, offense, shoot till your arm falls off. You know, I'm all down with that because that is exactly right about the women's game in particular. And you could say the same thing about the men's college game right now about the freedom of movement and offense being um, at, at the, the center point of, of discussion, especially when we're all in the February grind on the college side. But the other passion I have, Eileen, as you know, is Vegas and you're in Vegas and Vegas is a place that I think has some special, unique qualities for sport. Uh, I've felt that way for a long time about the city of Vegas. Why did you guys put it in Vegas? Oh, why did we put it in Vegas? Well, it was sort of, um, it was sort of by default a little bit, but uh, when I was hired or when I started learning more and more about Athletes Unlimited and was going through an interview process and talking to different people, you know, my head immediately went to, we need, this league needs to either be in Phoenix or, or in Phoenix or Vegas. And part of that was because of the weather aspect, right. And the resources um, to partner with potentially WNBA teams and, and personnel and people that are in those markets. Um, obviously Vegas was a place where people wanted to be right. And in our first year, as we're trying to grow I, I felt like it would be to our advantage to be in a location where athletes wanted to be in January and February. And it's proved out, obviously, with, with family and friends and people that are coming to see our games, um, you know, that Vegas was a good choice. We got really, really lucky on the venue that we found. Um, we basically ended up partnering with uh, a, a venue that hadn't been used in a number of years. Um, I mean, our staff did an amazing job of bringing that place to life. Um, it's very well located right next to the airport. Um, we basically operate in a two mile radius between restaurants, our venue and our hotel. So it's, it, it couldn't have been any better for this first year and really, really hope we can stay here. Um, we, we may, we may hit some challenges, but, um, but really hope we can stay here. And, and I'll, and I'll say this, the Las Vegas Stasis have been an incredible partner with us um, from personnel to just brainstorming to supporting us, you know, having Mark Davis show up and, and support us. Next week, we're doing a Las Vegas Aces night where we're inviting all their fans and their players are coming and Nikki's coming. And so it's just been a, it's been a really cool experience to, to work together with them as well. So without diving deeply into the financials or trying to do some line item budget here, I'm not asking you for that. I'm just asking overall the philanthropic attitude that the owners have about building this out, not just, I mean, we're talking about basketball, but you know, you do have three other sports. Like what's the genesis behind their passion to be able to make this happen for women's sports and women athletes? They believe that women's sports can generate can generate a business, right? And um, you, I, I, I don't, I don't, I can't speak to it. But one of the cool aspects and their belief in in women's sports um, and investing in women's sports because they do believe that there's a market for women's sports. Um, you know, we have a profit sharing program with with the athletes, and and I don't have a lot of specifics, so I can't go into detail with it, but. You know, once we start generating income, the athletes are going to be the ones that are going to benefit from that. Um, it's, it's. I don't even know how to put it all into words. How cool this this whole yeah. model and what John and Jonathan have created. You know, along with a lot of people, um, but but the model that they've created and the vision that they have for the future of women's sports is is awesome. I'm 100% in on that. I, I agree 100%. I've felt that way for a long time. 
about our longtime investment in women's athletics ourselves as people that have played it and have been involved in watching it grow for decades. I mean, I always said that a player led league in the WNBA with a franchise in Vegas, you know, those two components were something I thought the WNBA needed for growth. And, and we're seeing some of that happen. Now, if you want to consume AU athletes unlimited on, you know, where, where do you find your product? Where could somebody go that's listening to the podcast that wants to know, Hey, I'd like to check that out. That seems kind of cool. Leaderboard and leaderboard changes. And then the leaderboard changes in game. I mean, that's kind of cool. How do I, how do I consume that product? Well, a couple of ways. First of all, you know, our, our webpage, athletesunlimited.com. Um, we also have a, an extremely active social media uh, presence with on uh, YouTube, or not YouTube, on, um, <clears throat> on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, AU Pro Sports or AU Pro Hoops are two of the handles that you could find anything as it relates to basketball. In terms of television coverage, um, we are partnering with FS2 this year, as well as CBS Sports Network, Valley's Regional Sports Network, and most of our games will be streamed as well on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, you know, Deb, we got a week and a half left of our season. Next week's going to be championship week. Um, it's truly going to come down to that last day of games on Saturday. Um I, I would highly recommend if anybody's interested to, to try to check out our games on TV. Um, and it's, if you go to our webpage, you, you'll find where they will be um, located. But that's also the beauty of this. Like there's not a game that is, you can't find. So we're, we, were, we will always be visible for people to watch. So you're telling the stories of everyone, regardless of where they are on the leaderboard. That's really cool, right? So if you sign up as a player or you get invited to be a player, um, that's, that's an incredible opportunity to grow your own individual brand as well. Um, for the listeners that want to know, like, who, who's like at the top of the leaderboard or who has been consistently... You know, I don't know, just give me a few names, Eileen, that people would want to know that they might want to look up and see how they're doing. No problem. Um, Natasha Cloud has been a captain three out of the four weeks. Uh, Tiana Hawkins is playing incredibly well. Um, uh, 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 um, I'm guessing Kalani Brown must be playing well if she's signed a contract. Kalani Brown's playing really well. Um, uh, hang on. Izzy Harrison is, okay, has been yeah. a captain a number of weeks, right? These are players that, that are coming into their own and you're seeing it right before your eyes here and going to have incredible WNBA seasons. Um, Lexi about- Brown has been, Lexi Brown has had a great, uh, th- four weeks so far, three weeks so far. With How about a, a couple basketball. of my favorite lefties, uh, um, Kelsey Mitchell and Odyssey Sims. I, I definitely those two are playing really well. Courtney Williams has been inching up her way. And unfortunately uh, she wasn't able to play the first week, but she is, has been inching her way up that leaderboard. I, I, there's no doubt if she wasn't out for the first three games, she would probably consistently be a captain. Um, so, yeah, I mean, all of those players are playing really, really well. And And the thing too, Deb, like, I was talking to actually Pokey about this yesterday. I think it's going to be really interesting to see, especially these captains who have had to think about the game in a different way, how that's going to translate and help their game this year in the WNBA, right? Because they're going to be thinking about things in a totally different way now. And I only think it's going to help them in the, in their seasons with the WNBA. In a kind of an indirect way, they eventually maybe they'll want to coach and get back to the game that way because they've had to think about it that way. And now they're sort of getting some coaching experience while playing. The only time I ever remember a player coach was back in the old ABL days when Teresa Edwards was doing the Atlanta glory as a player coach. That's what I can, that's the only time I can remember that concept, honestly. No, it's, it's been, um, it's been, it's been fun to watch that. And also fun to watch. I mean, our facilitators have been amazing, right? We've had Pokey, Shelly Patterson, Lynette Pearson, and Danielle Viglione. Um, and the four of them obviously have, um, you know, bring different things to the table, right? But 
but all of them have been incredible mentors because it's not easy to have being a captain, what, you know, what they've experienced is not easy. Having to take on all that additional responsibility and still be able to play the game is, is super challenging, right? So not, not necessarily physically, but mentally, the preparation that goes into getting ready for practice and implementing, um, you know, offenses and thinking about, um, you know, rotation, substitution rotations and, but, and still having to play the game, right? So it's a lot. And the guys that have been captains continuously, like they're tired, you know, not only physically, but, but mentally, but they're, but they're loving it. Eileen, uh, for as long as you and I have been friends and as long as we've been invested in our game, I want to know, I already asked you what was fulfilling for you, but I want to know, like, you know, this is an incredible launching pad for an opportunity for women. And I know you care about who comes next, but I also know that you live in the moment right now. And I know you're having a great time. Um, when you look at what the future could hold for, for athletes unlimited, what are a couple of things that that you see, and then, you know, sort of like your, your parting shot for, for what you want to have happen for this league? Well, I think for basketball specifically, you know, the, the hope and the, the vision, I think right now, um, obviously it could change, but the vision right now, um, mostly, I think with the PEC, and, and like I said, we haven't had a ton of conversations with this, but I believe that the PEC, because they drive everything, right? Like, this is truly their their decisions the player on the council? vision, right? Excuse player, me? Player council, is that what you mean? PC? Player executive committee. Okay. So going back to the five that we have that are part of the player executive committee, right? Um, because they drive the vision. The, the vision is driven by them. Um, but I think they want to continue to, to have this league be for athletes that are on that cusp of being able to make the W obviously still having WNBA athletes in it, but the majority of the athletes being those fringe players, um, and providing opportunities and visibility for those athletes to further their career, um, in the W and, 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 and with that, Deb, you know, I think it's been very sort of a little unfair of people comparing us to the W right now. I mean, the beauty of it, honestly, is we complement each other extremely well, right? Our models are very different. So I don't think you can really compare us in that way. Um, but but we're, we're extremely good compliment to each other. And I say that because first of all, we, we play in the off season for the W right. We play in tradition, but we play in the traditional basketball season, which is also very cool to have a pro league now playing in the traditional basketball season. Um, the other thing is that our fans and our consumers, the way we're structured, they follow players, right? In the W you follow teams. So the great thing is, you start to find fans that are following players, then now we'll follow different teams because they've been following players, right? Um, you know, our model of storytelling only helps the W too. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I just see us as, as really a great complement to each other. We're different models, but we're perfect. I, I really believe that, that we're very perfect together and what we can bring and how we can grow women's basketball together on the pro level. And I believe there are plenty of dollars out there for both to coexist in a unique space, you know, unique and separate from each other and playing in the traditional basketball season can be a bonus for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Eileen, your owners are lucky to have you. I hope they realize, because I know the players do, um, I know the players appreciate everything that you do. I hope your owners realize how lucky they are to have you with your passion, your great knowledge, your incredible reference to the history of the game and your resource with every person inside of basketball. Um, so I'm, I'm so grateful that you took the time, uh, not just because you're my friend, but because we know this is a good thing to get AU out there so people know. Well, thanks, Deb. You know, I, I feel like I'm the one that's really lucky um to to have this opportunity you know for me 
I was with the Phoenix Mercury when the WNBA started in 1997, right? So I got to be a part of that experience of, of starting up the WNBA and now to be a part of Athletes Unlimited um, and starting up another women's pro league that I really believe in. Um, I just feel really blessed. I mean, I, I, I've, my journey has allowed me to do a lot of things that I never thought were possible. Um, and, and also honestly coming across people like you um, along the way and, and all of the great people in our game of women's basketball, um, I truly feel blessed. And before we get off of here, just a big shout out to you and congrats on your Hall of Fame induction. Um, I can't wait to celebrate with your family, you and your family in, uh, in June. Um, you know, you've given so much to this game and I'm glad that you're finally getting recognized for it. Well, thanks, Eileen. You know we're going to party hard in Knoxville in June. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm so glad that you could share this experience with us. And uh, we'll look forward to checking in with you maybe later on and see what's going on in the offseason. Sounds good. Thank you.